I'm Alex Cornishelli and welcome to our kitchen. I'm so excited that you're here to cook along with me. Today we're gonna make a spicy chickpea dip with crudite. It sounds very fancy, but it's not. And it's super simple and flavorful. So the dip we're making is similar to hummus. It packs a spicy punch. You can serve this with crudite as we're gonna do, or you can serve it with chips, pita chips, tortilla chips for dunking on the side. Let's get cooking. We're gonna start by blooming our spices. What does that even mean? So you have all these spices kind of napping gently in a drawer in your kitchen or wherever else. They're dried. A lot of them are very concentrated in flavor. And we wanna kind of give them a little wake up call. So we're just gonna take a pan, kind of a big one. We're gonna warm two tablespoons of olive oil. And to that, we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of the cayenne. And if you hear that little sizzle, you can even take it off the heat if it gets a little bit too hot, right? Just shut the heat off. If you've got enough momentum on your oil and just let it be warm. One teaspoon of smoky paprika. Mmm, smells so good. One teaspoon of sweet curry powder. You see a theme here? Mostly teaspoons. One teaspoon of dried oregano, which is just so very good with the chickpeas. I'm getting that smell, that aromatherapy. And then a teaspoon of whole coriander seeds, which I just take the bottom of a bowl. You know sometimes a recipe calls for crushed spices. Just put them on your board and run your bowl over the top of them so that they crush and they open up. This is really good for whole seeds. Sprinkle that right on there. I've got the heat off, you see that? And you can just smell that kind of blooming away those oils and spices coming to life. Now to that, we're just gonna add two grated garlic cloves. Just great so that they go in really easily and they cook super quickly. Right in there. Ooh, I love that sizzle with the spices. Stir that. Give that garlic just a second or two to soften ever so slightly. And then we're gonna add 15 ounces or a can of chickpeas just drained right over top. Just stir. You wanna stand back a little bit, right? Because especially the heat from the spices can be a bit intense. But you'll see right away that it's starting to coat the chickpeas. It's almost like you're marinating those chickpeas. Now they're canned chickpeas, right? We drained off the liquid. I don't use the canned liquid in this recipe, though the, though the liquid has a lot of great uses. I wanna just kinda keep it cleaner here. And we're just warming the chickpeas, coating them with the spices, and letting them cook until they become a little bit more tender than they already are in the can. I leave them on for about three to five minutes. You can't really go wrong here. Right, because we want to blend this and make a smooth dip. So it's not like, oh no, I overcooked the chickpeas and they're mushy. This is one of those times where we're cooking something super simple. It's gonna be pretty hard to overcook it. It's probably gonna even make it a little bit better. And you'll see the difference right away. You see how these chickpeas look spiced and coated and all the spices have been warmed and woken up in that olive oil? It smells really good. Now to that, we're gonna add some lemon zest and the juice of the lemon. So literally just go right over. And when I grate the zest, I go quickly over the lemon. Don't grate all in one spot. Move that lemon around. So we're just getting that outer layer of skin and not too much else, because that's where those beautiful oils and that floral smell from the lemon is. It smells really good. And then we're just gonna cut the lemon in half and add that lemon juice right in. So there's so many pieces of equipment for juicing lemons. Here's my favorite, are you ready? It's super cheap. Here it is. Put the lemon half in your hand like so. Hold it straight over where you wanna drop it and squeeze. So simple, right? But really don't be afraid to squeeze. Just don't tilt the lemon or move it because you see then any seeds are sitting on top here. None fall in the pan, and we didn't use any utensils. 
That's my favorite type of little trick, right? Again with the other half. And keep in mind, you might think, ooh, this is super citrusy, but by the time you puree them and we add the tahini, it really isn't. It kind of balances out beautifully. Don't be afraid to warm this slightly so that the spices and anything that's stuck to the bottom of the pan gets lifted off by the addition of the liquid of that lemon juice. The chickpeas should feel nice and tender. It smells really, now you can take a little nose bath, you know what I mean? It smells really good. And I like to heat these chickpeas up, get them a little more tender, but it also makes them just easier to puree. And we're gonna go right into the food processor with all of this. I use a rubber spatula here because I want to scrape every last bit off right in here. Right into, and just scrape, make sure you get all those spices that we toasted and all that lemon juice in the machine. It smells really good. Now to that, we're just gonna add our magical ingredient, tahini. This is just ground, whole sesame seeds. That's all it is. It's like if you made peanut butter from sesame seeds, you have tahini. And actually tahini, the word, comes from the Arabic word tahina or tahana, which is to grind. And that's all this is, is ground sesame seeds. So two tablespoons of that, right? Kind of generous, because this is the creaminess, the fattiness that this dish so needs. All you're really doing is suspending chickpeas and spices between some olive oil and some of this beautiful tahini. This is a Middle Eastern condiment, so good to have around. I like it in desserts too. We'll talk about that next time. Okay, two tablespoons tahini right in here. Spend 10 minutes putting the food processor on and just puree. Just kind of a note as I'm pureeing, what we're looking for here is for it to kind of sort of fall apart and then kind of come back together and coat the sides of the food processor bowl. Should take a minute or two. Don't be afraid after a minute or two to pop the top off. Mmm, smells really good. Check out inside. Scrape down those sides so that any whole chickpeas that kind of stuck to the top, bring them into the center. And right now I'm seeing honestly that it's a little bit dry. And if that's the case, if you see that, just add a couple of tablespoons of water just to loosen it up a little bit and make it a little bit smoother. Depends on your chickpeas. And blend again. That's good. That looks really good. Okay. And you can smell those spices, that fresh lemon. So good. This is gonna be a real hit. Okay. And then let's take off the food processor. First things first when you're dealing with the food processor, get the blade out of the picture. Just put that to the side. Give it a nice stir. And you can see with the spatula, you can really feel what's going on. And then we just spoon it into the bowl. Kind of, you know, spoon it as if you were building an ice cream sundae to give it a little bit of flair. Really get every last bit out. We worked hard for this. And chickpeas are such a great source of protein I think we thought long and hard this past year about our pantry and what sources of protein we have in it. I know growing up for me, when I, when I think protein in pantry, I'm thinking canned tuna or canned salmon. I'm definitely adding beans and chickpeas to that list of staples. Wow, I can't wait to dig into this. I'm gonna clean up and meet you back here when we're ready to prep our crudite and taste our spicy chickpea dip. 
Okay, so crudite just comes from the word crudo, raw, right? Any raw vegetables or assembly of raw vegetables. So it's super simple and you can kind of put what you want. I'll be honest and say my favorite is any combination of cucumbers, um, carrots. I love radishes here, they're really good. So juicy, they've got a little bit of heat to them. And I do peel them. I know that, you know, we like to be a little bit rustic with things like this, but with something as simple as raw vegetables on a platter, you can kind of afford to take a minute or two and just get sli slightly more fancy with it. These are little cucumbers, like little Persian cucumbers. And I find that um, even though they're sweet and they're tiny and they're kind of juicy, sometimes their skin can be bitter. Maybe you've seen those hothouse cucumbers in the supermarket, the ones that are tightly wrapped in plastic. I often eat the skin or like puree them and make cucumber soup or a dip. But in this case, we want to kind of get this sort of sleek, uh, refined vegetable for our crudite. So just a quick peel on a few of these cucumbers. And you can use bigger ones and just cut them into rounds if you like that better, right? Whatever looks the best where you're shopping. Some carrots. If you have carrots with the tops, you can you cut the tops off and reserve them for other uses. You can make pesto. You can even fry these carrot tops in a little hot oil and put them over your dip for a garnish. And I like to leave a little bit of that end on because I just think it's kind of pretty. Again, these carrots, you don't have to peel them if you don't want to. But you do look kind of cool, you know, serving those. You want to pick carrots that aren't too big, aren't too small, kind of a medium-sized one so that when you peel it down, it's nice, tender enough, um, but the right size, just to dunk right in this. And we're, we're orchestrating all these raw vegetables to dunk in our spicy chickpea dip, which is really a cousin of hummus with just a few added little spices in there. And you notice how I'm peeling kind of from top to bottom and I'm holding the edge. Um, the advantage to doing bigger sweeps as opposed to little nicks is you get a smoother surface when you're peeling your vegetables. And when you eat it, the texture is smoother. It, it's one of those things where how you peel it can actually affect how it tastes to you. Celery, are we really gonna peel celery? Is that what we're gonna do right now? It is. We're gonna peel that celery. Right now, celery is not a convenient uh, shape for peeling. I cut those tops off. The darker green leaves are really kind of bitter. You definitely don't wanna have that. And even that last little bit, the white bit at the end can be eh, not great. We don't wanna peel the whole thing, just peel the exterior, right? So we're peeling all of this. We're not worried about peeling inside, right? This makes me think of, you know, ants on a log or celery stuffed with cream cheese. But the truth is when you peel the celery, it's sleek, it's juicier, it's crunchier. It doesn't have that stringy quality. It's kind of worth it and it doesn't take that long. Notice me again, we're relaxed. We've got our nice long, Uniform motions, peeling all the way up in one swoop. People are gonna notice if you peel your vegetables. It's gonna separate you from the crowd. Now, one of my other favorite vegetables here, a radish. And these, I like the tops. They're kind of mustardy, they have a nice heat. And as long as you get radishes that have nice looking greens, we're literally just gonna cut those in half. Look how pretty that is. And the radish greens are totally edible, obviously. You can even throw them, by the way. A few pick radish leaves into a stir fry or into a salad. You definitely want to save those radish greens. And I'm cutting the radishes in half. They're kind of medium size. We're trying to make all these vegetables um, easier to eat than if they were just whole. If your radishes are smaller, you can leave them whole. So we've got that nice pile. And I mean, look at that. The radishes with the greens, really pretty. And it's a nose to tail use of the vegetable. All right, so we have our three stalks of celery. You could cut more if you're a celery lover. 
And literally, I'm just gonna cut the celery into three. So we get these sticks. The thicker ones near the bottom of the stalks, you can cut those in half lengthwise. It's nice when all your vegetables of one kind are a similar size and shape. Keeps things classy, the crudite. And I like to group them. That way people, right away when they look at the platter, they can pick and choose what they want, or you could just mix them all together. And I'm just building. So I've got my little pile of celery sticks, peeled, fancy pants, carrots. Cut them in half lengthwise. That's all the way down. So cool looking, right? And then maybe at an angle, again down the middle. So they're a similar size to the celery, right? And I like to leave the, that bit of top we have on. I like the vegetables to have a little bit of that sort of natural look, right? Part of what makes them feel fresh. And the other thing is, it gives you something to hold on to while you're dunking. Not bad when Mother Nature gives you a little natural built-in handle for your vegetables. And again, down the length. You can also buy baby carrots and just put those on. You can buy larger carrots. You can cut the carrots into rounds. It's really up to you. It's kind of fun creatively to play with how your vegetables are gonna look. And I'm gonna arrange those on the platter. Some of those green tops so we can see them kind of bleeding into the celery. Our cucumber, I just cut those very tips off on either side. These are so cute. Again, a larger cucumber, what's called a slicing cucumber that you see, perfectly fine. You can go down the middle. These are little, I I'm not gonna scoop the seeds out. Some people, and I'm just quartering them by the way. Some people scoop the seeds out of their cucumbers. I happen to like a little bit of the texture of the seeds and I feel like I've worked hard enough. I peeled them. So we'll leave some of those seeds in. You can take, you can scoop um, with a little melon ball or a small spoon. You can also scrape out the seeds. You could even scrape out the seeds. You have a little cucumber boat and you could fill it with the chickpea dip and just serve them like that, like little finger snacks. That could be fun too. All right. Got the cucumbers. You can see here, I'm building this little platter. It's so pretty and vibrant, right? And you can scrunch them up a little bit tighter, prop them up a little, give them some height. And then those radishes with the greens, which is so pretty. It's really cool to have one vegetable at least that still has a top on them. This just gives it this kind of wild look. And look how beautiful the insides of the radishes are, right? And then we have our chickpea dip that we made. I can smell the spices. Finish with just a little drizzle of olive oil on top. We've got olive oil in there, but you want a little bit on top so when you dunk, you get a little bit of that just pure olive oil taste. Some parsley leaves to make it super grassy and herbaceous and fresh. Don't be afraid to let a few extra parsley leaves fall on the sides of the bowl. So as people dunk, they grab a leaf or two with them. And then some flaky sea salt for some crunch on top so that you get a little texture. You get a little added extra salt crackling on your teeth while you're dunking these vegetables. There we are. All that's left to do is eat. So now I'm gonna take a minute to clean up my workspace and then we're gonna taste. All right, the big moment where we taste, and I love this because it's so many different possibilities with all the vegetables. I always start with a cucumber. I don't know why. Maybe because it's just so juicy. Mm. I love the way the cucumber can just absorb and bring forth those spices. So you get this juicy cucumber and then all the flavors, the nuttiness of the tahini, that paprika, the cayenne, it's spicy. The curry powder, that little bit of dried oregano, and most of all, the richness of the sesame and the richness of those chickpeas. Let's try a carrot. I love a carrot because it's crunchy, mm, sweet. 
kind of nice, the sweetness of the carrot. Mm. The carrot might be even better than the cucumber. And that's the thing about a crudite platter. You've got these different vegetables, different textures. One, the carrot brings out the, the, the spices more. The cucumber gives this juiciness, which sort of illuminates the richness of the sesame and the chickpeas. You've got that mustardy heat from a radish. Some of the vegetables come with built-in handles. so You can really get an idea. Mmm. Wow. The radish is almost mustardy with the spices, which I really love. You can also turn this into little hors d'oeuvres, right? Just smear a little bit of the chickpea on the length of the cucumbers, on top of the radishes. You can spread it down the length of the carrots. Fill in the natural crevices of the celery, and you can do little filled kind of dip-covered vegetables. Just do a platter of those that people can just grab and eat. I hope you enjoyed cooking along with me.